My name is Joe, and uh, I'm with the Street Air Beach program at the Working Center. I'm like Colin, I don't do very much public speaking. Uh, I'm here with Sarah, and I'm going to give her the phone. Uh, we're just going to hand the mic back and forth and uh, share this. Um, we try to do things as our reach workers, sort of together um, in collaboration with others. There's a few other reach workers here as well. Um, so, this is Sarah. Hi, uh, my name is Sarah. I'm also an art interpreter with the Working Center. Um, there is a few of us, there's about six, seven of us, I think. And we all have slightly different, uh, different titles and different jobs that we actually do. Um, but uh, Joe and I are, Joe, Tara, and I are street outreach workers, which means that we are based on the streets. 80% of the work that we do is actually walking on the streets and meeting people where they're at. Um, part of the work that we're actually also doing, aside from uh, supporting the people that we're meeting, um, is, is making sure that we're also building relationships with the businesses downtown so that the businesses are understanding who their community downtown is. They're not just sharing their neighborhood with the, the people that are coming and shopping in their, in their stores or actually just driving downtown to shop at their stores, but actually their customers are also people who are living downtown um, and may not necessarily fit into the middle or upper class. Um, and and <coughs> so just expanding that understanding of community, which is actually something that actually we have seen grow. Um, in, in the last few years, the definition of community downtown has actually changed. And what we're finding from talking to business owners is that the downtown is becoming a stronger community. The downtown uh, business owners know the people downtown, sometimes even by name. They know them because they see them every day and they might even stop and say hi. Uh, and that uh, the building of a community is so strong you know your neighbor, you can meet each other when you're walking down the street, when you're walking to work. And, and that to us, to see that in, in the last few years is, is huge. Um, I personally have been doing this uh, for about 13 years now. Um, so I've been, I've been actually lucky to see how it actually has changed and how the downtown community has changed to be able to be more accepting of the people that are, that are actually living and sharing the downtown community. Um, some of the other work that we do, um, sorry, to, so, I guess just in relation to, to businesses, we um, just conducted a survey in, in the past and, and going through it again, just talking to businesses, saying, you know, this is the support that we can provide for for people that are living on you know, on your streets, living inside your door, and. Um, a lot of a lot of time the response is, you know, we'll, we'll take your number and we'll, you know, there's somebody that I'm concerned about or there's somebody that I know, and, and uh, so I, I think it's it's just positive um, the the uh, the reaction that we're getting from downtown businesses and and their um, desire to, to reach out as well. Um, the other group that we are trying to build relationships with, and, and it's working, and they are actually trying to build relationships us in, in trying to understand um, people who are experiencing homelessness and people who are experiencing and living with mental health issues and addictions is also the police. Um, most people, and it's not something that we actually like to discuss much in public, but, but people know that if they're having concerns with police or vice versa, if police are concerned about somebody in particular, um, they can actually come to us and we can sort of become a um, that sort of bond between person and liaison between the two. Um, and sometimes, you know, again, when it comes to the businesses, um, they have an option of calling us, and if they're, especially if they're just checking on the well-being of somebody, calling us instead of calling police first. Um, so diverting those, those, phone, those phone calls for police and calling us instead. And, and that's a huge role. Um, and I know police, we've definitely gotten feedback from police they appreciate if, if it's something that we can actually come and support with and, and build a relationship and you know most most likely we'll know where the person is staying or living and if we can just help with that it's a lot easier than trying to figure out if somebody actually needs to go spend the night in jail um, as, as far as supporting people um, right now our most recent stat I think is 
we have about 620 people that we are currently supporting uh, between three outreach workers, three street outreach workers. Um, so that's, it's, it's quite a huge number. They're not all people who are currently experiencing homelessness, uh, but people who have either been homeless in the past or are at serious risk of becoming homeless again. So it's, um, and, and the supports that we give are anything from, you know, a simple housing search and making sure that they are actually making the housing appointments, meeting with a landlord, um, making sure that they know their rights as a tenant, uh, the questions that a landlord can and cannot ask for, the requirements, uh, and, and what a good landlord really should be doing as a landlord. Um, some of the other things are, we were talking about the healthcare system, is making sure that people are, if, if they did have a family doctor, they don't, they're not sure if they still have that family doctor. Uh, reconnecting people with their family doctors is also huge, making sure that their health is taken care of. Um, and, and building relationships with hospitals. So every time we take somebody to the, to the ER, um, we make sure that that's actually what's needed. If it's not, then we're actually making an appointment with a family doctor if that's possible. Um, or taking someone to a walk-in clinic, and if really need be, then we're going to the hospital. So building relationships with the nurses there, making sure that the understanding is that we're there supporting the person that we've, that we've come to hospital with that actually needs to be there. But also, um, we realize that the hospitals are extremely busy, and having us there, you know, just sitting with the person, accompanying the person, so that, it, that the experience is not as scary, um, and not as uncomfortable, it actually helps everybody. So it, those relationships, building those those collaborations with business owners, police, and hospitals, it's, it's actually a, goes a long way to educating the community with an in awareness to just who you're sharing your neighborhoods with. Um, in, in this particular case, it's people who are experiencing homelessness. I think the other, uh, the other thing to mention is the existing uh, supports among community of people who are experiencing homelessness. Uh, Ken mentioned just um, being a informal outreach worker, and there are many people who, who fit that role. Um, we're around as outreach, we're around uh, during, the, during the days, kind of um, certain hours, but there are, there are people, with, there's a very supportive group of, of people that are living on the streets, and I think that can't be emphasized enough, um, the amount of uh, support that people offer each other in this, uh, in this experience. Uh, yeah, that's so true because a lot of the information that we get, if somebody's actually concerned, the concerns come from neighbors. Um, so somebody knows where somebody else is staying, you know, whether they're housed or not. They haven't seen them in a few days. Then they come to us and ask if we can go and check on, on somebody because there's concern. Um, and without that strong community, there's, we wouldn't be able to do our job. And, and that community has accepted us as part of their community. And, and so therefore, for us, you know, it's, it's really amazing that people accept us into their community. Because if that wasn't the case, we wouldn't be able to do our work. So the relationship that is built and the trust that we are given by the people that we're walking with, is really the only reason that we get to do what we do. Otherwise, it just wouldn't work. Um, so that, that respect and that dignity goes a long way, and it's completely given up first with no expectations. Um, we're just hoping that, that we'll be welcomed wherever we go, and, and if that's the case, then that's a bonus, and, and we, get, you know, we get to meet some really wonderful people in really wonderful situations, too. It's not always just... Uh, it's not always just... <coughs> A really sad, horrible thing. We get to see people's talents come out, and we get to enjoy them in really, in really great settings as well. So, um, yeah, it's great that way. I just to mention, that we uh, speak for myself. We totally agree that uh, more affordable housing is, is needed. Uh, more understanding is, is needed, and uh, more of a mutual community is always needed. Um, and I think we should always be uh, pushing our pushing ourselves and our communities and our governments towards that. Um, and I guess we're just um, also wanting to focus on uh, 
terms and the the positive things. And I guess the reason why I feel so uh, drawn and, and uh, wanting to come back to to the downtown and to St. John's Kitchen and, and be among um, the people that I've, I've uh, I work with. Uh, and the last thing I think that we want to mention is the, um, again, as the collaboration between the community that we're walking with and we're meeting every day, um, but also the collaborations between other service agencies. Uh, there's, there is no way that any of us could do any of it on our own. Um, I mean, I mean it, it all starts with the person and the relationship that we've built with that person. And, but whatever that person, wherever that person wants to go, really nothing gets done if we aren't all collaborating with each other. That's something that, again, has grown and it's something positive that we've been able to see. Lots more work needs to be done, but uh, I think that, that, that we're, we're headed the right way. And again, collaboration between agencies has been growing and it's huge. Um, there's a, a regional project called Step Home, which is a great example of that. It's several agencies sit around a table together, and, uh, and that, that, that's not just agencies, but it also includes people with lived experiences who have brought a huge welcomed voice to, to the projects. And I, I think they've actually done a lot more work than we have. We sit and meet, and they get the work done. Um, Colin is part of that group, and, and they do fabulous work. So giving, giving people voices is, is also enormous.